Dilly and the body snatcher right here. It's a champ. Big up to sports and icon. Subscribe. Otherwise, I might pay you guys a visit. Right, let's just say as a, for instance, an example, Tyson Fury, he fights and defeats Deontay Wilder, October, November time, for example. Joshua, he defeats Kubrat Pulev around the same kind of time. So that's Joshua and Fury, both free. Dylan White, he gets past Alexander Povetkin. Now, when you look at Tyson Fury, the only route that he can go is either Anthony Joshua for Undisputed or his mandatory, which would be Dillian White. So this is a kind of situation that you would not want to be Eddie Hearn in. In some ways, it's a good position for him as far as his company is concerned. Because whatever route they go down, Eddie Hearn is going to be working together with Tyson Fury to put on a huge show. And it's going to be at all Brit, isn't it? Fury versus Dillian White, all Brit. Fury versus Joshua, all Brit. So it's going to be a difficult situation because Eddie Hearn, he's been banging the drum for a long time that Dillian White, he deserves his WBC world title fight. He feels that, or he says that people have been messing him about within the WBC and everything's been unfair. There's been like a lot of injustices. Dillian White, he's been number one for two and a half, coming up three years. In fact, it'll probably be about three years by the time February comes around. So there's that situation where it's, if they bypass Dillian White, it's unfair on Dillian White. That's for sure. In some ways you could look at it and say, but he'll probably get some huge step aside money. And that's fine. If he's happy with that, then, then that's great. Which is probably the route that Eddie Hearn will probably end up going down, seeing about giving Dillian White some step aside money. But again, they're going to have to offer Alexander Usyk some step aside money as well, as he is a WBO mandatory. Now, Think about the conversation that Eddie Hearn's going to have when he's going to have to negotiate which one fights Fury. Because Fury has to fight one or the other. Dillian White or Anthony Joshua, providing that, um, they all win, of course. So, is he going to have that conversation with Dillian White saying, listen, mate, I know that uh, you've been number one for so long. This is your opportunity. Yes, you could fight Tyson Fury right now. But we want undisputed. The country wants undisputed. Now, Dillian White, he's not, you have to remember, he's not a fan of either fighter, first of all, and he doesn't care about undisputed for somebody else. He wants to be the one to be in undisputed. That's what he wants. And you can't blame him for that. It's a dog eat dog world, right? So is he gonna have that conversation with Dillian White and say, sorry, mate, no. You ain't fighting Tyson Fury next. Here's a chunk of money. We're going to go the undisputed route. Because by going the undisputed route, this would mean that Fury Joshua, they would have back-to-back -back fights. They're going to have a rematch clause for both ends. So that would be Dylan White out for another year that he's not going to get his shot at the WBC. Now, in the unlikely scenario that the rematch would have undisputed and it is unlikely i do foresee the first fight with joshua and um, fury if it was to happen next for undisputed but the rematch will not be for undisputed i think that the wbc will take the belt off the winner and i think the wbo will take the belt off the winner that's what i think will happen not a guarantee of course not i mean uh, you know i'm just guessing but if they don't and they are allowed undisputed for the rematch as well then who comes up first, Dillian White or, like, or Alexander Usyk? You could say, but Dillian White, he's been number one for what, a thousand days, like three years, whatever it may be. So he should be up next. But because the WBC messed Dillian White around so much, officially he started when he defeated Oscar Rivas as mandatory. That's what they're going with. So that means the WBO was called before the WBC. So the winner of Joshua Fury will have to fight Alexander Usyk. And then Dillian White will be up next. That's how it's going to work out. So Dillian White, he could be frozen out from anywhere between a year and 18 months. On top of what, what he's already had. So it's a horrible situation for um, Eddie Hearn. And I wouldn't want to be Eddie Hearn when he has to tell Dillian White, sorry mate, but we're going to overstep you. I know I've been on your side, but listen, this is Anthony Joshua. Yes, we've helped Anthony Joshua get all the belts and become a... Um, 
a two-time world heavyweight champion, a unified heavyweight champion, but we're going to favour him one more time by, by allowing him undisputed. I mean, I can imagine Tinny White's reaction. So it's going to be a very, very uncomfortable situation, but as I said, it's going to be a good business time for Eddie Hearn. Very good business time. Because the, the only route that the world titles can go down is Dillian White, his guy, Anthony Joshua, his guy, and then at some point, Alexander Usyk, again, his guy. There are no other equations in this one. These are the only fighters that will be fighting for world titles. There will be no other world champions, no other voluntaries. So all the fighters will be promoted by Eddie Hearn. He's in that kind of position. So financially, his business is going to see it very, very well. But on a personal level, of course, he's going to feel bad for Dinny White, but Anthony Joshua is his golden goose. He's close with Anthony Joshua. Is he close with Dinny White? I don't know. But that's a horrible situation for Eddie Hearn, isn't it? He's going to have to have that conversation with either Dinny White or Anthony Joshua. Is he going to turn around to Anthony Joshua and say, yo, we're not going to give you undisputed. You're going to go fight Usyk next. We're going to have Dinny White, Tyson Fury. It's going to be an awkward, awkward conversation with whichever one Eddie Hearn has to turn down. Ultimately, it's not his decision in some ways. He's just a promoter. But he's, he's going to be the mouthpiece for it. He's going to be the one that gets the flack from either side. Is Joshua going to be angry with Eddie Hearn for postponing Undisputed? What if Joshua goes and fights Usyk while Fury and Dylan White get it on? What if Joshua loses to Usyk? Again, it's still going to be beneficial for Eddie Hearn because Usyk is a matchroom fighter. So then Usyk will go fight the winner of uh, Fury and um, White. So it's good business time for Eddie Hearn, but of course he's not going to want Usyk to beat Joshua. Personally, I would favour Joshua to beat Usyk, but you never know. You just never know what's going to happen. There's no guarantees that Fury's going to beat Wilder. As much as we would favour him, there's no guarantees that Dylan White would beat Alexander Povetkin. As much as we would favour him, there's no guarantees that of any fights in the heavyweight division. But again, what happens if uh, Fury and Dylan White fight, and Dylan White beats Tyson Fury? What happens? Are people going to be upset about that because we're not going to see Fury and Joshua? We're going to see Dylan White and Joshua for Undisputed. For me, I'm more than happy with that. At the end of the day, they're all Brits, right? But there's going to be a lot of people who want Joshua Fury with or without the belts. They want to see that fight. And if there's Undisputed, a mega fight turns into a colossal fight. Very awkward situation for Eddie Hearn. Anyway, I hope I made sense. Drop your thoughts below, click thumbs up, subscribe. Catch you all on the next video.